Honey, wear my socks. Honey, wear my socks. Honey, wear. What the? F Hello again, everyone. This is Bionic Slime. I'm your online voice for reviews of your choice, and this is another installment of BS Reviews. Today, I will be reviewing the stop-motion animation feature-length film, which is based off a children's book written by Charlie and the Chocolate Factory's creator himself, Roald Dahl, entitled The Fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to see this movie at first. It didn't look like it was anything particularly special. I mean, visually looked really great, but I wasn't sure how it was really going to play out. And I wasn't sure if circumstances and money was going to allow me to see this movie. Thankfully, they did, and I was quite, quite grateful to see this movie once I actually realized just how good it was. But I'll explain that more in the review. Fantastic Mr. Fox is brought to by 20th Century Fox Films. It was directed by Wes Anderson, who's uh, made such films as Rushmore, uh, The Darling Limited, and The Royal Tenenbaums. He also wrote the screenplay for the film, which, as said, was based off the novel by Roald Dahl. It stars the vocal talents of George Clooney as Mr. Fox, Meryl Streep as Mrs. Fox, Jason Schwartzman as Ash, Bill Murray as Badger, Wallace Wolodarski as Kylie, Eric Chase Anderson as Christopherson, Michael Gambin as Mr. Franklin Bean, William Defoe as Rat, and Owen Wilson as Coach Skip. The plot of Fantastic Mr. Fox. Mr. and Mrs. Fox are a married couple who go around stealing chickens and other various items from random farmers' barns. Unfortunately, when Mrs. Fox finds out she's pregnant, she asks her husband to give up this life of chickeny crime in order to settle down and have a normal family. They do, and they bore a son, Ash, who's particularly weird and unusual and strangely jealous of his seemingly superior athletic cousin, Christofferson, who is staying with him because his uncle is sick. Uh, Mr. Fox finagles to buy a special tree from his lawyer, Badger, and they decide to settle down there, but what we find out later is that Mr. Fox is actually bored with his simple life and actually goes back to stealing chickens and other things with his new weird friend, Kylie the Possum, only to find out that he's been stealing from the three of the meanest, nastiest, and downright vicious farmers in all the land, Mr. Bogus, Mr. Bean, and uh, Mr. Bunce. Led by Mr. Bean, they decide to go against the fox and hunt him down and kill him for stealing their food supply, which creates an all-out war between the humans and the animals, as Mr. Fox must join together with all of his friends and family to fight against these crazy hunters and keep their lives and their home in one piece. Uh, review of the plot. Uh, you can pretty much tell right away this is a kid's novel kind of story. It's fairly simple. You know, animals stealing a bunch of stuff from the guy and they're hunting back. And just so you know, Survivor, War of the Species kind of thing. What really impressed me about this, though, was that the story is very simple and obvious. But what really makes it actually work is that you're putting so much emotional, dramatic emphasis into what's happening that you take the story much more seriously and it shows that there's a greater sense of intelligence working behind that you never would have thought just by looking at the trailers alone. That's what really impressed me about this film. It has a very slick, sophisticated, smart-ass, yet clever and witty and yet still child-friendly funny sense of humor that manages to keep the film extremely interesting, entertaining, intellectual, and still emotionally gripping for when the story, you know, folds into place. And I really didn't think there was that much smart alecky smarts behind this film from the very beginning. And I think what really makes it work is that they make this situation, while it seems silly, actually much more intense, funny, and, you know, gripping. It actually keeps your attention really hooked on. And part of it is done by the excellent characterization and how they associate with these dramatic emotional incidents. I didn't think you could have such emotion from these furry stop-motion creatures, but they really did a good job with it. I'm very impressed with how they could turn a simple story around that like that into something much bigger. Um, review the characters. As I said, the animation is absolutely beautiful. It actually looks like a real book brought to life, a Roald Dahl book. 
but still, it looks like they jumped right off the page. And they look like real animals. I mean, the fur looks 100% real. They act like the animals, which is hilarious in every scene they do it in. They walk like them. I mean, it's just so amazing at just how detailed they got everything in here. And it just makes the characters that much more fun when you see just how brilliantly they are played by their voice actors. George Clooney and Meryl Streep are fantastic. You couldn't have found a better couple to play Mr. and Mrs. Fox. They have such good chemistry, even if it's just through vocal interactions. And their dialogue is just freaking hilarious, but it wouldn't be half as good if it wasn't for their excellent delivery with each other. Clooney just makes every line just seem that much more smoother, suave, and funny at the same time. Uh, Bill Murray, very good as Badger. I mean, he just he was just so much fun. Everyone here was so much fun. Wallace Wolodarski, who's actually not really much of an actor, he's more of a producer, really did a good job as Kylie. I thought he was very funny, and he's I think he's got a perfect voice for voice acting. Uh, William Defoe has a very amusing role as the rat. Uh, I loved Michael Gambon as Mr. Bean. He definitely made um, so much more menacing and evil, and he made it have a lot of fun with it. But uh, by far the best one, in my opinion, is Jason Schwartzman as Ash, who is the real scene stealer of the film. He's just so freaking hysterical and bizarre. He's a weird little dude with a weird little attitude, and Jason Schwartzman fits him to a furry tee, and it's hysterical because he tries so hard in the film to stand out, and he does, but for all the wrong reasons. And that makes him my favorite character, just because of the utter silliness of the character and what he tries to do throughout the film. Um, review of the cinematography and the music. Music was good, and it was really, really good. It, it, there wasn't that many popular tunes used, and that kind of worked because it helped with the natural setting of the story. It didn't feel like an overly cartoon pop song pumped out cliché. And it was filmed so beautifully that it just made the animation look that more awe-inspiring. I mean, they just they shot everything from such unique angles that you could always see what was going on, and yet it always felt like you're still in the storybook. The sets are just so beautifully designed, I was blown away at how incredible stop-motion animation could make these creatures look so much more realistic. And after seeing so many stop-motion films, from the likes of, say, Nightmare Before Christmas, Corpse Bride, and even James and Giant Peach, it's nice to see that you can take it to a different approach and style, and make it seem like it's brand new. It's like this has always been here all along, but we've never really seen it being utilized so effectively. I think that's what surprised me most about this. I was at first regretting that I might dislike the style because it looked too a little weird. I mean, it looked kind of bizarre. But once I saw it, it was actually quite beautiful, and it just made the characters seem that much more realistic. Granted, there's nothing realistic about these animals talking and doing all this shit, but still, it just made everything look funnier, better, smarter, much more realistic, and much more enjoyable to watch. Um, flaws about the film. One thing I was particularly disappointed about, just because I felt it would have been nice to see more of, or at least more of another side, was the other... Uh, the other two hunters. The film mainly focuses on Mr. Bean as the main villain, and he's great in it. But, you know, the whole story was about these three mean farmers. There's three of them, not just one. And we didn't really get a much chance to learn more about them or hear any much of them talk. They'd barely said much. And it just kind of bums me out that we couldn't see more of them, just because it would have helped balance out the character development of all the villains and not just Mr. Bean. Another thing that bothered me was kind of the wasted use of Owen Wilson as Coach Skip. I mean, he was like in one very short scene, yet he's, you know, credited as, as like a t part of the top billing cast when characters who aren't even credited in the, in the commercials, like William Defoe or that, aren't even mentioned, and it's just, it just seems stupid to me to even have him in the film because his role was so small, as opposed to the people who aren't mentioned in the commercials and have much bigger roles, so that was my other problem. It just seemed like a waste to bother to put him in there when he barely had anything to do with the story or had any lines to speak of. Final wrap-up, Fantastic Mr. Fox is a fantastic little surprise that I don't think anyone was, was expecting to be this smart, this fresh, or this freaking funny. It's an absolutely hysterical, hilarious, laugh-your-ass-off smart movie. And I've seen very rare films that are actually funny and smart where people can still get it. But this movie does it in charming spades. you got a beautiful cast with George Clooney, Meryl Streep, Bill Murray... Uh, William Defoe, Jason Schwartzman steals the film with Ash. I love him. He's a funny little asshole, and he's just so weird and complicated. 
beautiful animation. The music was great. You get some real intellectual storytelling here for such a simple kids-like story. I was so impressed and happy with this film. I think I'm going to freaking buy it because it was just so much of a great delight and I recommend you take anyone to see this no matter what age kids grandmothers I don't care it's just that good for that many people bottom line I give fantastic Mr. Fox four stars out of five stars well that's all for now thank you all for listening this has been Bionic Slime for BS Reviews and bye for now